Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Compelling Conversations podcast. I'm so excited to be introducing my 15th guest, Sean Joffrey. Sean, thanks so much for being here, bro. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm very excited for this, dude. Um, where are you joining us from? I am joining from Richmond, Texas. Nice, nice. Yep, yep. yep. I wanted to say that you know, we've only met once, we've only had one conversation ever, but yeah. just the power of that one encounter was so big that we're here now. So I think that's really cool. That was a great conversation. Like, it's one of those conversations where you lose track of time, and that's how you know it's a good one. Literally, yeah. It was a good time, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to begin by talking about something that Jordan Peterson introduced me to. And I love symbols. And the way that he sort of dissected the story of the exodus of Moses and the Jews from Egypt was so fascinating. Mm. He says how in Egypt, there's the tyranny of the Pharaoh, right? And that's just, for the Jews, there's an order in that. It's a tyranny, it's an oppression, but there's an order in that. Right. And then they want to be freed. And to be freed, it's through the spirit of God, Moses. And so once they are freed, they're not taken to Jerusalem. They're taken to the desert. And that desert is the freedom. But that freedom is chaos. It's confusion because they're feeling tempted by false idols in the desert. It's a hardship. So um, I thought that was very fascinating because the way that he correlated it with human beings was we're always oppressing our souls. Right. But in that oppression, there's an order. And so we feel comfortable in some sense. Yeah. And then when we step closer to like, you know, finding God or whatnot to free ourselves, it takes us to the desert, right? Metaphorically, which is chaos because it's unfamiliar to us. There's all that confusion and we're right. tempted by, by false idols, by desires and whatnot. So um, I thought that was very fascinating. And uh, I was very curious to hear what you might have to say about that. That reminds me of uh, the order and chaos dichotomy reminds me of uh, Star Wars. Is that right? Yeah. And the the whole, um, especially in the first three, uh, chronologically, where uh, they, they're talking about the Sith, I guess, like Palpatine is talking about, you know, establishing order uh, through like, you know, being a strong man. Um, and the the Jedi were like, you know, the Republic is the way of the order. And they viewed like the Sith path as chaotic. Um, so it just it just you see you were drawing that dichotomy and it reminded me of that. But um, yeah, definitely uh, order or stability, I guess uh, the status quo um, is sort of what people are used to. And that's where you're comfortable. Right. So. A lot of times that's easier and change, even if it's change for the better, can be scary because it's the unknown, right? And you don't know the unknown. Um, and when you get there, like, what do you do? It's not something you've experienced before. Uh, and that's where people can go here and there with the false idols and whatnot. So, yeah. That's Is a the really unknown? Yeah, go ahead. No, I'm just saying that's a really uh, interesting way that uh, Jordan Peterson laid that out. Yeah, uh, he further continued it by saying, and this is more of like a Judeo-Christian version, but um, how when they're tempted by all these false idols, God sends serpents upon them. And so they're like freaking out. And so they ask Moses, hey, could you talk to God and get rid of the servant of the serpents? So, you know, Moses talks to God and God tells him, you know, take your staff and put a bronze snake on it in the desert and tell the Jews to look at it. And so the idea is when they look at that snake, their fear doesn't disappear. Rather, they get courage. And so now they can, you know, fight the snakes and kill them. Right. So the idea that he was introducing from a psychological perspective was um, fear doesn't just vanish. You get braver. So I thought that was interesting. Face, but, your, um, fear. Yeah. face your fears. Yeah. I wanted to say about the unknown. Are you afraid of the unknown?
afraid, apprehensive, 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 apprehensive. because like, it's like a kind of, there's like a cautious optimism, but also a fear, uh, because with the unknown, you have, you know, it can go in any direction, right? You can have hope in the unknown for, you know, the best possible outcome, but you can also fear the unknown because it could be a negative outcome. Um, and you really don't know. So that's why I would say apprehensive is really the word. Mm, I like that, actually. Yeah. That's that's pretty cool. I, I didn't think about that as a replacement. Because right. there is a fear there, but there's also kind of like a, you know, you're looking to the future, but with concern, right? Because you don't know that's that unknown factor. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you think about the future often? Or are you more of a present person? I, I think about the past and the future. I need to learn how to be more of a present person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I'm a very, I'm a very nostalgic person. Uh, I'm a very regretful person. Um, I'm a very idealistic person. Um, and with the idealistic part, it's like, you know, you wish for... I feel like for me, at least like at any given point in my time, I have an ideal of what I want my life to be and look like at the present and in the future. And like, for me, a lot of times I look back and I'm like, man, I missed a lot of targets, you know? Uh, and it's personally, one of the things I really need to work on is removing myself from that and being like, okay, well, I'm here now. There's a future. Let me try to refine, you know, my aim. So I don't miss those future targets. Uh, but a lot of times I get stuck in the past, but I'm also, I'm also kind of a dreamer and an idealist. Uh, so I do kind of think a lot about the future, the different possibilities. What is my role? Um, and I think you kind of derive the answer for what is my role in the future from your experience in the past as well. Uh, so in that way, they kind of play together. Yeah. I like how you mentioned that target thing again. I, yeah. I, that was something I specifically remember you saying that one time that we met. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. cool. That's how I look you, at it. Yeah. You mentioned nostalgia and regret. I'm wondering, like, with your experiences, do you think that the pros outweigh the cons or vice versa? It's a tough question. Uh, I, I wrestle with that. Uh, I wrestle with that. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, like, was it was it worth it? You know, going through going through the regrets, going going through the experiences that I regret. You know, were they worth it? I would say the part that usually wins out in this internal battle is uh, it was worth it, um, because I think like when you have regrets, at least you have something to reflect upon and build upon. Um, and I think that self-criticism, although it can be toxic and even disabling, I, I think it's necessary for, you know, for growth and to really be able to like deconstruct the past to try to figure out how to construct a better future. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it is worth it. I think all the trials and tribulations refined me as a person and my perspective. And uh, I think out of like struggle, you gain a lot of empathy right, for others in the struggle. Um, and for me, that's one of the things where like, now looking to the future, I try to keep in mind that it's not just about me, right? The future is not my future, it's the future, it's everyone's future. And what role do I play in that? given the experience that I have. The that is, that's amazing what you just said there. Uh, the that's, future that's is not just about me. Exactly. Wow. That's, that's where looking to the future, there is that fear of the unknown, but there's also that hope. Right. Wow. Yeah. Uh, no, that's really cool. I, I, I very much like that. How Charles, do you, uh, yeah, that, go ahead. Uh, you know, kind of time continuum. Like, are you, are you more of a future person? Are you more of a past present person? How does that kind of work out for you? Um, I would say I, I've become very much a present person. Good. I'm not, you know, I haven't made it, so to speak, but 
I am very much more present. And there's a show called Vikings, and there's mm-hmm. a character in there called Ragnar Lothbrok. And one of the things he says to his son is, don't look back, you're not going that way. And for some reason, ever since I heard him say that, I just, you know, alhamdulillah, like I don't, I don't look back. I just mm-hmm. don't. If I do, it's more like, you know, like, oh, yeah, that happened. Cool. But I'm just like, okay, what's done is done. You just keep going, you know? Um, I like I like that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Charles Bukowski, he, he said something along the lines of, if you get punched enough, you start saying what you really want to say. And I can definitely see that in my life. Like, oh, man, like life really beat me up, so to speak. And now I'm just kind of doing the things that I really care to do. Would you say that you have a similar experience? Um, yeah, 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 somewhat. Um, I think, I think life, life beating me up kind of did refine my sense of purpose. And then it's like, okay, now I kind of like, now I'm, now I'm going to go on my path. Right. Um, so I, I think that definitely it helped me refine a purpose so that I can then act on that more precisely. And it gives me like this, this drive, I think, to do better in the future um, for myself and for, you know, others who may be uh, struggling. So I think it's really like one of the things that's really given me like a sense of like, you know, collective, like, you know, everyone has a struggle. We all struggle and some people are really struggling, you know, worse than I am. Um, so I think at least like with the experiences that I've been through with struggle and with the privileges I have and the blessings I have, like, I, I owe it to the next person that if, you know, if it's possible, I at least get them up or try to get them up if it's, if it's possible, um, to a level where they can also, you know, use that tough situation to motivate themselves to then go on and find their purpose and act on that. I have to point out that you have this really cool, like, stoicism on you, like when you're speaking, you know, and like your demeanor and just your, it's like a very cool, very mellow, like just way of speaking. What do you think that this is, where, where does that come from for you? Where does that come from? I think, I think it comes from, uh, I'm a very type B person uh, by nature. What does that mean? So they have like personality types like type a type b i don't know how like scientifically sound this is um but a type a personality is a lot more like you know social and they draw their energy from uh crowds and they're very expressive and you know uh a type b person is somebody who's a little bit more low-key a little bit more laid back needs more alone time kind of an introvert um not that the two are mutually exclusive but uh, I tend to be a bit more of a type B person. Um, so I spend a lot of time by myself just thinking. I've always been like that since I was a kid. I, I, I loved reading and I would just like, I'd spend a lot of time alone. Uh, and so I think part of it comes from that. I think part of it, like, man, I grew up in Seattle, bro. Yeah. You know how it is because you know what, man, you're the same way. You have like a very like chill demeanor, a very like, I feel like you're like, you know, like you're really Zen in a way, you know what I mean? Like yeah, I very you. much saw that. Like when I met you, I was like, Oh, this guy has to be from like California or something. <laughs> he has to be from like the West coast. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I really love that compliment. Thank you. And I really appreciate this. And actually the reason like I pointed this out to be honest with you is like for some strange reason, I have actually been feeling kind of nervous this mm. podcast through. I don't know if that's come across, but it's it's kind of weird. And I, I think like maybe it's I don't know what it is, but I noticed I'm like, wow, like Sean is like really calm. And this is so cool. So I wanted to point that out. And I think it's it's awesome. Well, yeah. bro, for whatever reason you you may be nervous about, I, I promise, bro, I'm not a cannibal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I get you. I get you, man. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I have like. I have those times too, where I'm like, dude, like, I don't know why I feel this way, but I'm very like, feel very bro. Like, I mean, we, we were, we were supposed to podcast on like what Monday and I called you up and I'm like, <laughs> like I'm just, 
I'm so I've had such a down day today. Like, you know, I yeah. want to play a game. I want to really, you know, um, and, and so we all, we all have those times, man. And sometimes you don't even know why you're just, you just, yeah. Sometimes you really just don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, I am curious though. What is your A game to you? Man, my A game, to, that, that's a, that's an interesting question. Uh, I would say it's like when I can, so like I'll compare like today versus that day. Right. I think today I I can bring my A game because I'm very like mentally engaged, right? Like I'm very, um, I think that day I was kind of just like, I was really down, like I just was out of it, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I guess my A game is when I'm able to like channel my thoughts well, like articulate myself well. Um, so like mentally I'm in a good place and then also like, I guess like emotionally or like socially, like that mind verbal connection, you know, is, is, is flowing well. Um, I, I think that's kind of what I had in mind when I, when I was thinking about, man, I won't be able to bring my A game um, is, is that. Yeah. But yeah. No, no, I appreciate that. I mentioned it to you as well. Like, it's really cool that you said that to me because the whole purpose of the podcast is like just honesty, you know, and, I love it when we can bring that together, you know? Yeah, so, definitely, definitely. Cool stuff. For sure. Yeah. Would you say that... Does dishonesty ever hurt you, if you are dishonest? Dishonesty, like me being dishonest? Yeah. Because, like, you know, like, in our lives, like, we feel like, okay, yeah, like, I'm living honestly. You know, not, like, maybe literally, but, like, I'm living how... I'm in flow. Yeah. And then when you're not in flow, does that hurt you? Like, oh man, that, that really. Yeah. Yeah. Life. Yeah. Cause like it, for me, it makes me feel kind of self-conscious, like, dang, like, you know, like this is, this is not how it should be, you know? I like that. And, this is not how it should be. Yeah. And then I worry and I'm like, wait, so how should it be? You know? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. Cause then I start comparing and I'm like, oh man, like, you know, I've got, I've got so far to go. And, you know, you feel like you're so like, you feel very like tiny on this journey and you're like, man, it's such a long path. And I'm just, you know, but I think the, the thing you need to do is like flip that realization into hope, hope. <laughs> Cause you know, clearly there's room for improvement. Are you lost or are you found? Lost lost why lost um lost because i well okay let me let me let me go back let me let me take a step back um i'm finding um i'm not completely lost uh but i still have my path is not 100% defined in my vision right now, I'm still kind of fine tuning what I want to, to do and how I want to do it. Um, and I think there's going to be more self-reflection and growth needed for that. And that discovery is where I would say I'm kind of lost because sometimes I just don't know where to start. Um, but at the same time, I do feel like I'm grounded to a pretty good degree. And so that's why I would say I'm finding because I feel like I found a degree of my footing, but I still have room to go, room to grow. So I cannot say I'm like totally found. You once referred to yourself as a nomad. Are nomads lost or are they found? Wow. <laughs> wow. I think a nomad can be lost, but I think it's through that journey that they find. And I think sometimes a nomad is one who finds 
that journey that that journey is where he's so it's it's almost like it's almost like he's found himself being lost right i feel like it's it's going from like being a clueless wanderer to now being like still a wanderer but i guess with i guess gr- more grounded right so that when i think about like when i think about a nomad right if i'm to set out right now uh with just a backpack at first i would probably have a rough idea of where i wanted to go but i feel like as i traverse i would probably realize like there's more unknown out there than i thought but i think through that journey i would find things in the unknown and maybe i would find that that journey is what i was looking for rather than a destination on this journey that you have do you think you encounter more serpents or dragons personally i would say dragons elaborate on that um i'm very uh but sometimes my my thinking is very abstract um so let's talk about being lost a little bit i i find myself wandering in my own mind a lot um sometimes it's aimless sometimes it's with an aim um and being abstract and having a very like zoomed out view of things the problems seem bigger and i think i i end up focusing on big problems rather than small problems and by small i don't mean like small in how much of a problem it is but like i guess like the more consistent problems the ones that are like more looming um and i would call those dragons um because they're kind of there and you know you have to face them one day when i think of a serpent i think of something more of a snake it's closer to you it's smaller it might be attacking you you know um i guess more directly when i think of a dragon i think of this huge creature suspended in the air guarding something that one day or at some point i will have to fight and that's going to be a big battle um i feel like i have more big battles than series of small battles if that makes sense mm. or maybe i just pay attention to the big ones more i don't know but that's really my like that. on serpents and dragons tell me what you had in mind uh, what what is a serpent and what is a dragon to you i believe it was nietzsche or it might have been carl jung who said something along the lines of like for a man to become a hero the he must first find like a dragon or the serpent must first become a dragon mm. right like you cool. have to actually slay that so i think that like for instance in the past year i was quarreling with snakes right i was putting my hands into snake holes and getting bitten because mm. i'm not fighting an appropriate enemy okay but i think that when you do decide okay like my battle is not with snakes my battle is with dragons okay it will be difficult but at least fire is better than venom is what i would say mm. fire is better than venom interesting yeah. interesting yeah cuz that venom can you know it can intoxicate you with all sorts of poisons yeah fear being one of them right right but fire it's just okay it burnt you but you move on you know you yeah. move on so what you can recover is. from that yeah so something along those lines interesting you know? it's an interesting analogy yeah certainly yeah. is and it's it's always fascinated me you know how dragons have served such a purpose in mythologies as well you know mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's and it's like universal like the Chinese have dragons in their mythology. The Persians do too. Yeah. It's do too. Thing. Europe like I wonder what it is about 
dragons or about like big flying reptilian creatures? Yeah, that's a good question. They just like pop up in all these different cultures. Yeah. And what's interesting, actually, uh, Jordan Peterson, uh, he was discussing serpents and he was saying, I don't remember exactly what he said, but it was something along the lines of the serpent isn't always Satan. And I thought that was an interesting, you know, distinguishing point that he made because, yeah, the serpent might not always be Satan. So that dragon, like, who might that be? You know, I don't know. I really don't. That is interesting. That is interesting. Maybe, maybe the devil within you. Yeah. Serpent. Right. Or your demons or serpents. Yeah. Are you afraid of your demons? I'm annoyed with my demons. (laughs) (laughs) More than anything. Um, Because they're, they're there and they just, they just keep bothering you, whether consistently or from time to time they pop up and they're there and you just got to wrestle with them and then they go away and then, and then they pop back up. And then I feel like for me, like I grow and evolve and they grow and evolve with me. Hmm. Uh, yeah for some of them for some of them you defeat them and get over them um but i've noticed like sometimes like as i grow and evolve and become wiser not saying that i'm wise but wiser um sometimes like my demons just adjust and adapt to that i don't know it's interesting you said that you know bothered were you ever afraid of them? And if you were, when did you start losing that fear? I think, um, yeah, I think I did have, and I think I still do to some degree have a fear of my demons. Um, as I became grounded, as I started finding, more uh and finding more of myself those demons became less fearsome um and i think that's just because i had more as i found more of myself and found more in general i um i became stronger i became more capable and equipped of combating these demons mentally um and i think that took a lot of time a lot of self-reflection a lot of like introspection and thinking you know like self-analyzing you know why am i thinking this way why am i fearing this why am i hesitant about this and really trying to break down those mental processes and uh i feel like as i did that i got a better grasp uh a better grasp of my sword with which i fight the demons i like that that way it, it reminds me of like uh that that whole thing about uh, the serpent in the desert with moses mm-hmm. the way you just said it you know you don't fear doesn't vanish you just get braver yeah absolutely. i'm curious have thoughts damned you more than actions yeah 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 um being so like introspective and and spending so much time thinking and you know, being lost in thought, being my default mode, I have really bad ADHD. Um, like, I'm not I'm not saying that as a, you know, like, I'm so ADHD, you know, like, I actually do. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I get lost in thought a lot. I get lost in thought easily. And I, by default, I am more in my head than I am in the external world. So when I, I think when I said I was a nomad, I meant that kind of in two different ways, but probably more in the in terms of uh, a nomad of, of the psyche. Uh, and so getting caught up in thought a lot, uh, you know, takes time away from action, takes attention away from action. And sometimes when you overthink, you hesitate on taking action. And a lot of times like opportunities can slip by um, or you look back and you're like, man, I could have used that time better. Um, because at the end of the day, like what good is thought and refining your thought and gaining more knowledge to think about 
if you don't put it into action. Yeah. And that is like, that is a balance. Um, I've been doing better at striking, but I know I still have a long ways to go, especially recently. I've been doing a lot better at striking that balance. During uh, COVID, I like I was extremely quarantined because my parents are immunocompromised. So I stayed at home. Uh, I rarely went out. And if I did, I was being super safe. Um, and actually, before uh, the like quarantine order, me and my parents had decided to start quarantining. And I had actually embraced it at first because I was like, when else in life am I ever going to have an excuse to just completely isolate myself and stay by myself? Like, this is a cool opportunity. I'm going to take it. Uh, and there was a lot of thinking that went on during that year or so. And I think that was like, that was almost like a, like a cocoon or a, uh, what is that in Dragon Ball Z, the hyperbolic time chamber where they would go and like train. <laughs> like a I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it was like they would go in this chamber and they would train for like 15 minutes, but 15 minutes here is like a thousand years there and they would come back. Ah, uh, like, Narnia oh. kind of stuff. Some, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, and I feel like, I feel like that, that was a time of like incredible, like mental, emotional and spiritual growth. And I think that helped me get grounded even though uh you know during that time my main companions were my demons so was it a double-edged sword in that instance yeah it was it was uh it was difficult a lot of times it was sometimes it was you know even torturous um you know self-isolating my myself or self-isolating like that and, you know, I'm kind of imposing that upon myself. But at the same time, like there were times when I enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed, you know, spending so much time just exploring being a nomad, um, you know. Would so, you say you're a, a misanthropic person? Like uh, you're just not interested in seeing people? I, I don't get that vibe from you, but I'm just curious because no, the way you expressed... Yeah. I love being around people, man. I love being around people. I love talking to people. I love, you know, connecting with people and understanding. You're good at it too. You know, I enjoy it. I thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, but I do need my, my own time as well. I do need my own time. Um, and I also am like very, I guess, like cynical of society as a whole. Uh, just because of like all the problems in society and all it, it seems like we're very uh, we're very stagnant and complacent uh, going back to the initial uh, analogy of like being under oppression yet seeing finding order in that right um, and I'm very cynical of people in that regard but I, I thoroughly enjoy being around people and connecting with people everyone's on their own wavelength and it's it's a fun process to get to know somebody and try to you know synchronize those wavelengths yeah yeah going back to that analogy i know we've discussed it i think with the way we've been speaking but are you in the tyranny of egypt or are you in that desert with moses do you think or have you made it to jerusalem already I think I think we are in the tyranny of Egypt, as in as in I think the state of things, the state of affairs right now is the tyranny of Egypt. I feel like mm -hmm. people are we are generally complacent. We're aware that there are issues going on, but a lot of times we're caught up in our, our own day to day and our survival and whatnot. And at the end of the day, like this is the familiar status quo that we know. Um it's like what is it called? Stockholm syndrome? When ah, yeah, you've been convinced that your oppressors are your lovers or whatnot. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Or at the very least, there's stability here. And yeah. how will I take care of myself or who will take care of me if I if I have this overlord, you know, if I if I run away from this? I think I'm susceptible to that too. I think I'm susceptible to falling into that mentality as well. 
Um, but I also, I also want to say that I, I really am looking for that journey to the desert. Um, yeah. and I think in some ways I have kind of undertaken that, um, not that I'm at the desert yet, but long way to go. It's been a wonderful conversation, man. Do you have yeah. any closing thoughts? Anything that you wanted to say, but you felt like you didn't get a chance to something on your mind you wanted to express? Man, bro, I could talk to you forever, dude. Like really? Yeah. Yeah. I was looking at that timer and I was like, man, I wanted to ask Sean so many more questions. Yeah. yeah dude, likewise. Likewise. Um, concluding thoughts, man. Hmm. There's so much to say about so many things. Um, but I would say, I guess I'll, I'll reiterate this point that I made earlier for myself. Uh, you know, you go through your personal problems and, and it's like, man, like I'm going through so much. I'm so bogged down by, by, you know, all these issues that I have and all these fears that I have past, present, future. But when you realize like you are part of a bigger struggle, Gramsci had this quote, uh, Antonio Gramsci, he was an Italian socialist. And he said he was writing a letter to his son uh, from jail. He was in jail under Mussolini. And um, his son was very interested in history. And he said, you must be interested in history the way I was when I was your age, because history has to do with this, with all people in all places and at all times. And their common struggle to, I don't remember how the quote ended, but their common struggle to basically fight for liberation. And I realized that, you know, I'm a part of the common struggle. And I would say, like, to anybody, like, realize that, like, you are a part of a greater struggle. And it's bigger than you. And if you can't live for yourself... If you feel like you don't have any reason to live for yourself, live for the struggle. That live was for the struggle. Awesome. The way yeah. you put that together. It was awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. To you, brother. Yeah. I'm so excited, man. You're um a Seattleite, bro. You know, I love <laughs> Seattle. You're from Seattle, so another plus, you know, it's awesome. Yeah, man. Keep yeah. it grungy. Keep it grungy. Yeah, and you said liberation, nirvana, right? Taking that everybody seeking that wow that's yeah. that's a crazy way that that came around <laughs> yeah yeah um but it's it's honestly been such a good time talking to you sean uh thank you so much for your time bro i mean I, i'm honored to have hosted you here it's been awesome thank you. i'm honored to be on here and i think this is a great project man keep it up uh, i mean i've watched the previous episodes it's a great it's a great effort i'm looking forward to to seeing more man thank you yeah inshallah man but um, you take care, man. Um, I, right, man. I'll see you around, right? Yeah, for sure. Let's link up. All right. Cool. All right, bro. Take it easy. Thanks. You as well.